All right, guys. Well, it's 6.30, and I got the financial model for this week done. Uh, a lot of research, a lot of logic, um, but I think it's really cool, and it's completed. So this is, if you want to start an orchard, really it could be applied to anything that, you know, sells any kind of fruit, trees, or whatever. Um, <laughs> There's four different tabs. We've got our returns tab here, which you could show, which you can see it shows a running cash flow. You put in your um, expected operating years here, and everything populates as far as you know your initial investment, the year you're breaking even, the total cash return, net cash return, annual percentage, total return, net cash return, annual percentage, and the IRR. Then I also added a little um set up here based on your provision this tells you do you have enough cash to survive all the other costs of startup um with the provision obviously if that's positive you do and then you've got net loss during fruit bearing years so when you first start you may have a net loss for the first year or two um and this is says if you do you need more money well if you have enough and the provision left over to cover that then you don't need to put any more money into the business so it's nice to stress test, do you know feasibility, whatever, just to, to try to test um, the th the theoretical startup of an apple orchard. So here's where the big data input goes. We'll start with acres and yield. So you're going to just put everything in this shaded color. You're going to populate yourself and this has you know size of orchards which this could all be different however you want to scale it up um, or as however you know you what you need between your min and max possible acreage over the lifetime of the investment so you might start at five acres or you might buy like 30 acres but you may only cultivate five of it or ten of it um, over a certain period of time so all that's going to be dynamic and be able to be chosen so based on that we need um, we need bushel prices and total pounds based on all this stuff so we have you know you put in the size you put in the trees per acre and then you put in your bushel yield, yield per acre and then you've got your total bushel yield which is just multiplying the number of acres times the bushel yield per acre. And then you have your pounds and then your total pounds. So, and the total pounds is working off of the total bushel yield times this. So it is taking into account the increase in size of acres. Uh, and then you got your um, cost per harvest, which this. actually is another input so you can based on the amount of acres you can key in a cost because that could be variable it, it may change so there's the first set of inputs next you have cost and assumptions so you've got uh, different things like you might want to buy a honey beehive so here's the cost of that per hive the amount of hives you want uh, annual cost of that uh, you got advertising uh, packaging this is based on cost per 1,000 apples or 1,000 pieces of fruit or whatever you might have that can be adjusted. You've got apples per bushel that could be different based on what trees you have. I just put in 35. And you got deer fencing per foot cost if you want to fence in the the orchard put in at four dollars there that could change. Then we've got like annual sanitation service, annual office supplies, uh, fuel costs, diesel, uh, cost per tree because you got to buy your trees on the initial investment then you've got all your equipment costs building selling venue if you want to sell out of a thing or if you're going to distribute it you know send it to vendors then that would be different um, and you've got your land cost uh, per acre I also added four extra annual costs for it could be for regulation or what have you there could be some more costs you want to put in to test out 
then we have our fuel here so it says based on your years how much fuel are you going to use so this allows you to make it dynamic over the lifetime of your investment and this all works off of the uh, projected total orchard acres by year so this is going to drive your years of the whole um, the activity that you're doing or for how long so you've got that populating there there's the year range and then you've got so obviously at the beginning and with less acres you might not need as much fuel so you can change that as it scales up that's probably helpful to those that want to plan out and know what they're doing with this that's gonna allow you to have um, more accurate modeling then you've got annual fuel cost uh, you've got annual packing cost the packing cost is based on it's doing a big formula with the apples per bushel and the packaging and all that um, we've got deer fencing and the annual deer fencing cost in here and that could be variable as well then we've got labor you've got to have your labor so eleven dollars an hour that includes sales or uh, per, uh, payroll taxes um, in there uh, you may want to adjust it if you know this could be any number it just depends on what you want to pay your people and what the you know then add in your payroll tax on top of that uh, annual cost over here and then you do your estimated hours for your hourly annual so say you are only want 500 hours for your non-equipment labor for equipment labor you want a thousand for your uh, for your payroll then you've got staff job type one two three four five so that could be any number of things whatever function and rules you want to define them as and then we've got an annual cost account or we've got a cost per job type and then you've got a count of each and then you've got the annual cost over here and that flows into this as well because we have the year that you're actually going to start each job type and then that's going to flow through to make, um, you know, you can see these are staggered when your hourly starts and when your salaried um, positions start. And you can see as you go forward, they start getting there, and by the end, you're actually using all job types. Uh, that's all based on these. Let's say we don't want to start our staff job till year seven on that. Well, now look, we don't have any staff jobs until year seven and then two pop in there Come back to this is three and that's the reason why you need all this dynamic um, integration is because when you start an apple orchard it actually takes you a good two to four years for the first trees to actually start producing fruit that you can sell so your first couple of years is going to be all cost all startup whatever you need to get everything ready to be sold um, and that's going to be a bit of a, a headwind there until you start making money. Then when you start making money, that offsets in your positive cash flow. Um, what else? Oh, so I added six different types of fruit or or apples, if you will, whatever you want to label them as. Uh, you can label them right here and that will flow through to all this so if you let's say I had green apple here and then let's say I had oranges <laughs> and then bananas just for fun and then let's see what else uh, berries um, you know see pounds of production in green apple oranges that all updates dynamically the same with the sellable and then the revenue of each type and then what you'll build is you'll do the expected sale price per pound of each of these and so basically you only need to categorize these based on what you can sell at a given price and then you've got your expected percentage sold of sellable production that means you know if you do an apple orchard you might be able to sixty percent of the apples you can actually sell and then of those what percentage do you think you'll sell and then what percentage do you think you'll just have to throw out or recycle or whatever 
So the 75% is saying what you're actually going to sell to the customer, 60% is saying what you're going to actually be able to use from the total production of the apple trees. So that all flows um, towards this, to the revenue. Then you've got your percentage of the total orchard, so all this is always going to be 100%. So you can break up what each type of fruit you're doing, what percentage it makes up of the total orchard. And I guess that covers everything. And then everything populates based on the model going over. Uh, it goes out 50 years. And everything's dynamic. All you do is change everything in yellow. And you can see harvest per year. Right now it's at 2. Now watch if we put this at 1 with our given assumptions. You'll see this actually starts losing money because you're you're not making enough um, your costs are just too high to cover it now again if you're doing one harvest that might take less cost so you could say maybe you know your payroll is lower you know you might be 500 here 500 here and then uh, salary you might not have any Just put in a number here beyond what the model has, and there, so that clears off that. And there we go, we're actually back to cash positive. <laughs> now, let's say you start at say year 20, 25, you start two of them, and you see it kind of flows out, you know, balances out starts to stop increasing after you get past a certain amount of years but you can play this is just all nice because you can mess with all mess with all this based on your assumptions and it really allows you to see you know what you might be able to do on a you know feasibility test and if you want this spreadsheet um, I'll give you a free version which is basically going to have everything locked so you can't use it. If you want the full version, I'm going to charge $65 on this. I feel like that's probably a fair one-time price and uh, I'll have the link in the description box below. You can click on it and um, purchase it. I'll send you the spreadsheet via email once you have purchased it and help you use it or decipher it or kind of modify it for your own uses. Um, it depends on what exact. If you want something modified that goes beyond the scope of what I've just showed you, I do charge between thirty and thirty-five dollars an hour. It depends on how busy I am. Um, but that's just if if you want something that goes beyond what this currently can do. But it's very robust and will cover nearly any kind of sensitivity analysis you want to do. And over time, I'll probably go back through this one, and I got to go through that other model I did on the mine to do. If you want to finance some of the startup costs, and then that will have debt service flow down through here and show you the differences with that. Um, but so far, right now, this is just saying you know initial investment. Whether you get it from investors or yourself, it's saying that you're not financing any of the startup. But that can be changed, and once I modify it, then it'll be available in the full model, full version, but I have not done that yet. Alright, have a great day. This is smarthelping.com.